All right, so today we're going to be looking at a tutorial question that I gave before, which looked at the titration of glutamate. Now, we have already done this tutorial question. I've already given you the answer. But I know some people couldn't make the tutorial, so I did this video as well. Because this is something that is very important. It's easy once you get the hang of it, but it gives students a lot of trouble at the beginning. So I did this video with the hope that after you see this, you should be able to do the, the titration of glutamate as well as be able to look at the ionization of any other amino acid. So that's the plan here. So the question was set up like this. Glutamate has three ionizable functional groups with the following PK values. The alpha amino group equal 9.67. The PK value for the alpha carboxyl group is 2.19. And the PK value for the R group is 4.25. In this question, they also give you what the R group is, which is CH2CH2COOH. Now, there are some things they have asked for you. First of all, you need to write the equilibrium equations. In other words, you're going to start with the fully protonated form of glutamate. And then you're going to show as titration goes along, when you titration with, let's say, a base, and you're moving the proton each step of the way. So you're going to show those equations and... You're going to assign the correct pK value to each one. Now, for each ionized, ionized species of glutamate that you, that you draw, you need to also give the net charge for that species. And finally, you want to be calculating the pI. So there's a lot going on in this question. So what I would tell you all to do is that I want you to try, for those who didn't do the tutorial before, I want you to try this question before you go ahead and look at the answer, all right? So read the question, all right? Write down all the main points that you think you will need, and please try this question on your own. All right, there are a few things that you will need. Um, you need definitely need a calculator, all right? Uh, you will need to know what PI stands for, which is the isoelectric point. You should know what the definition of the isoelectric point is. As well as you should know, not you should know the general structure of an amino acid, and then you should be able to draw what glutamate is. So again, to really understand this, you should really try it on your own first before you dive into the answer that I have. All right. So please pause the video now and go and try this question on your own, and then get go ahead and see what the answer is. All right, so best of luck, and I'll be here waiting for you when you have the answer. Hi guys, so this is JC Matthew here, and um, we're going to be looking at the answer for that tutorial question I gave you on the glutamate amino acid. Well, it's a fairly easy question, so I'm sure you all have it up, but just in case, I'm going to go through slowly on the board for you all. Now, glutamate, first thing you need to do is draw glutamate. Now, glutamate is an amino acid, and like any other amino acid, it's going to have a general structure carbon, an alpha carbon, that's connected to a carboxylic group, that's also connected to an alpha amino group, a hydrogen. Now this part is where all amino acids are different, because you're going to be drawing the R group here. Well, the lucky thing is that this question, they were, they were nice to us. They told us what the R group is. The R group is CH2, CH2. C O O H. And what we have there is the fully protonated form of glutamate. But let's remember that when you're doing a titration, that carboxylic group is titrated as C O O minus plus H plus. And the amino group and H3 plus is going to go to N H2 right, plus H plus. This is just a bond with nitrogen has a fourth bond here. Alright? Now, we have three pK values. The first pK value that it gives us was a pK of 2.19. Now, as a general rule, or let me say this is the question as well, the, at 2.19, when you pH is 2.19, that's the typical pH at which the alpha carboxylic group will lose its proton. 
So what you need to do is to draw the same molecule, but just this one is going to be this proton. So let's draw that. So we have H, carbon, which has this, well, a linear collapse. We're going to draw back everything you see with so NH3 class. C, H2, C, H2, C, O, O, H. And it is this group that is going to go to C, O, O, minus. So you should get in half of it by now because you know what these groups are titrating to. The next PK value is one that is at 4.25. 4.25. But 4.25 they said that the oxalic R group was this proton. So we're going to rejoin this structure over again. So we're going to put H, C, C, O, minus. N H C plus C H two C H two and it is this carbon solid group that we going to use is proton. Alright, so by now we should have the handle. So please pause the video and if you have not so yet, draw the fourth structure for me. And then come back and see what I do. Alright, so the final PK value was at 9.67. So we're going to be drawing over the same structures here. We just have now this alpha mean of the this is proton. So we have H, CO minus, NH2, CH2, CH2, COO minus. So you have finished the first part of the assignment, which is to draw the ionizable structures. The next thing you want to do is calculate the net charge for these things. So let's see. Net charge, you're going to count up all the charges available. For this one, it's only this charge here. That's the only charge I see. So you put the number up and then the sign in the one plus. So do the same for these three structures. You can pause the video here and see if you can work on the net charges. I'll come back and let's do it again. All right, so let's do this net charge now. So let's see. We have a, a plus one here, and we have a minus one. A one minus one will give you a net charge of zero. Go ahead again. It's a net charge. Okay, for the charge, we have a plus one, a minus one. And you have a minus one up here. So one minus one to zero minus one. But so you always put the number and then the sign. So the net charge is one minus. So by now you should have the hang of it, and I'm pretty sure you'll be fairly confident that you can get this one on your own. So give it a pause as I say, and put this one out. So you should have that the net charge here. Alright? Is well, there's no plus anymore. It says this minus one and this minus one. So you get a net charge of two minus. So we have completed the second part of that question, which is to calculate the net charge. The last thing we need to do is work out the PI or the isoelectric point. So what you need to do is to be able to define what PI is. Alright, so tell me what is PI? Anybody? Right, so PI, the isoelectric point is the pH at which the amino acid will not move in an electric field. In other words, the amino acid has a net charge of zero. But normally the formula for pi will be pi is equal to pk1 plus pk2 divided by 2. Now for Glycine and other simple amino acids, that's easy. You just find the average of the PK values. But for amino acids such as glutamate, where you have more than one PK value, you have to figure out which two you're going to use. So the first thing you need to do is identify the amino acid that has a net charge of zero. So that's this guy here. And then you use the values on the side of it to find the isoelectric point. So the PK1 will be 2.19 plus 
Right, guys. So I hope you all got everything I said there. I must ap apologize for the audio. It's the first time I'm I'm doing it, and there was a lot of background noise. So I'm going to have to improve on that. So subsequent videos will be much better than this first one. But I hope you got the the message, nevertheless. All right. So keep practicing, as I said, with other amino acids, and get the hang of it. It it, it gets easier with practice. All right. So, as usual, you know, join us on Facebook. Do a search for Biochem Gem on Facebook. You're going to find us. And if you have any comments, questions, you could put it on YouTube or you can give me an email or send me um, tutorial sheets of, of questions that you have done that are similar to what we have done here. You know, that would be cool. All right. And as usual, if you like what you saw, you know, show your love, hit the like button on YouTube. And... Thank you for giving me your time and you know and there are going to be more videos coming soon so keep studying guys and we'll see each other soon enough. Take care.